Hello everyone, welcome to Ginger Gear. My name is Gingerbeard, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the platform movement object with Firefly. Now, I bet you wonder, what is Firefly? Well, Firefly is a group of extensions or our objects in early access that allows you to create 3D games in Clicking Fusion. So, what we're going to be doing is having these 3D objects, they'll be they won't be doing much. They'll be basically for the looks and all the mechanic stuff will be happening in the background. So movement and jumping and all that stuff will happen in the background on a 2D layer and in the front, which we'll be seeing, will be 3D. So let's go on and get into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do, or it's not needed, but I like to do it, is create three layers. The reason I create three layers is because it helps kind of organize things because when I usually um, mess with the Firefly it usually has a bunch of these like uh, it usually has like an engine and a camera and because of this it can kind of clutter up the the frame and this just keeps it so I can lock it up and I won't be able to move it around by accident when trying to create a level or place things in the scene or frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and name the first layer. We're going to name it Engine. So this is where the engine is going to go. And in the second layer, we'll name this Camera. Now I'd like to note how I'm naming these is I'm going to the layer toolbar and I'm hitting the layer that I want and up over here in properties on the properties tab you'll see it kind of comes up with these little settings and we just want to go to name where it says untitled and just change it. Now this one will be um, gameplay. Okay since we got all that done we have our layer set out now let's go on and get some of the Firefly objects out. So now we want to double click the frame. And over here we're going to see like all these different, we're going to see all these different categories here. And we're going to see Firefly. That's where we want to go. So now you can see we have all these objects here. And the ones that we were wanting for now is the Firefly engine. We just want to go on and click that and plop it into our frame. It automatically centers it. Um, and now we want one more. Um, I will have to remember that we need to put these on the layers that we made. I mean, we don't have to, but it just keeps it a little bit more organized. So I want to take the uh, Firefly engine, and you can see it's like a little number three there when I clicked on it. That's because it's on the third layer. So what I'm going to do is to put it on the first layer is come over here drag it next to this layer, the layer toolbar and I'm going to hover it over our first layer. There. Now we're going to go on and hit the little lock button right here and this will prevent it so this will prevent us from clicking on it and accidentally dragging it. So if you want to unlock it just come back over here and click it again. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to click on our second layer and this will make sure that we place it on the right layer. We're going to uh, come back, and now we're going to need our camera. So we're going to double click on the frame again, and we're going to go grab our Firefly camera. So now we're going to go and plop it down, and this is just basically saying um, it's this default area. Um, like, if you hit yes, your camera will be placed away from the center of the scene and if we hit no your camera will be placed at zero 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 meaning the X will be zero the Y will be zero and the Z will be zero so we're just going to go and hit yes though because it don't matter okay so now we have our camera on here for now we're also going to lock our camera into place okay so now what we need to do is go on and go into our third layer. So let's go back to the layer toolbar. 
and let's go to our gameplay layer. Okay, now since we're here, now like I said before, what we're going to have is all, everything in the background of the 3D layer. Like the 3D layer is what we're going to be seeing, but in the background we want all the mechanic stuff happening like uh, the ground and when the player collisions with the ground and all that stuff. So we need to go in and get some active objects. So now we're going to go back up here to all objects and let's go get our, get some actives. So we'll get one and let's get a second one. Okay. Um, now let's go on and get the platform movement object. So we're going to go up here and type in platform. Okay. Now I do want to put a side note here that um, if you are just joining into this tutorial for your first time and you haven't seen any of the other videos I've done, um, the platform movement object, uh, I shown where to get that because that does not come with Click Infusion. Um, you're going to have to uh, watch another video that I had. It's where I show how to get and how and show like every bit of the variables that are in there like the little different values that it has so if you're curious on how you get it and how it kind of works I would recommend watching the platform movement object um, tutorial I had um, part one okay so let's go on and plop our platform movement object onto the ground and we're gonna keep everything default right now so we're just going to put okay Okay, so now that we have our platform movement object on, on the field, we're going to go on and name these active objects so we can kind of know what they are. So the first one's going to be player. And the second one's going to be, um, I guess we'll just call this one floor slash wall. Okay. So now let's go and give them some colors. So I'm going to go in here, and I'll make the player blue. And since we're using a platform movement object, we need to make sure we make the hot spot at the bottom middle of the feet. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for the floor. Double click on the object, and let's just make it, um, we'll just make it black right now. There you go. Now we also want to make sure that the hot spot is in the middle. So let's be sure to click on this on the quick move, the middle button. Okay, so since we got our player and our floor and the platform movement object, now we're gonna need two things from the Firefly area again. And that's gonna be just for now, like a basic cube. So if we go to click on double click on the frame and go to Firefly, we can see Firefly node primitive. Now, these things allow you to create or um, to just like basic shapes in a way. And that's what we're going to be using for now. Okay. So we're going to need two of them. So let's go on and clone this one. So we're going to right click on it and we're just going to climb. Okay, so now we got two of them. Now, um, what we want to do now is rename them. The first one I'm going to go on and rename to 3D player. Because in a way, this will be our player that we'll be seeing in the 3D view. The player that we just made is kind of like the collision of the player. That's going to be in the background where it will be doing most of the hitting against the walls and colliding with the ground. Uh, the 3D player is going to be just for show. He's going to be the one that's going to be uh, that we'll be seeing. Okay. Same thing for the wall. So let's go on and rename it. Okay. So now what we need to do is make these objects a little bit bigger because by default our 
player and our wall is 32 by 32 pixels. And these, now the 3D objects, at least the primitives, um, they, they kind of share, I guess, a similar scale size. Like, for instance, if I go and click on, say, our player, and I go to this little check mark, which would be the settings and it's properties tab, we can see. Now, before we're going to ignore all this except for the size and the primitive type. Because our type over here is cube, and that's what we want. And this is our size. Now, our size is set to 10. And we want to set this to 32. Because this will make it, um, I guess, about the size or the correct size that's equivalent to 32 by 32 pixels. Because when I was doing a lot of testing, I've noticed that's what I was, that was the thing that was happening. Like if I had 32 by 32 um, player, that was a box, and then I had a 3D object, and I set the size to 32, and uh, it just would collide perfectly. So, what we want to do is going to go to the size and change this to 32. Okay, since we got that done, we need to do the same thing for the wall. We want to go to our size and set it 32. Okay. So now, this should be uh, the same size as our player. Okay. So now, what we want to go on and do is start creating the world. So, in a way, um, what we'll be doing is we'll be having the floor and wall, these objects, be placed around the, the area in, in our frame. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a for each loop, which is going to go through each and every one of these objects that we place and create a wall slash floor. So, we're not going to be doing this for the player though because the player is just one object. We're only going to be doing this with the floor. Okay, so let's go and get started. So let's go to our, our event editor and let's go and create a new group of events and we want to call this start a frame. Okay, so now in our starter frame, we want to go on and add a new condition. And what we want to do is, is on, we want to go to storyboard and controls, and we'll go to start a frame, because we want this to happen as soon as the frame starts. We want to start a loop. So we're going to go on and click on our wall slash floor, we're going to come down to count and we're going to do four each. Now, once again, I don't know if I ever used a four each loop in, I mean, I think, I think I have maybe in a very first tutorial, but what a four each loop does, it just goes through each object in a way. So, for instance, if I start, if I start the frame, and I tell it to, basically what I'm about to do now is, let's say it was create a world, and I'll show you. We'll create a world. I do create and we'll, we'll name it um, floor. Okay, so now I've created this loop. And now what a for each loop is going to do, when we go to, to make a new condition, we're going to click on our floor slash wall, we'll go to loops on each object, or on each object, and we want to type in the same name. So what we're going to do is create underscore floor. So now, at start of frame, it's going to go through every object that we place in that world. It's going to go through every one of them and do the action that we tell it to. And I'll show you what we're about to do now. So, now we have our loop set up, which is pretty simple, setting it up. 
Now we're going to go and create a new object. So we're going to create object. And the object we want to create though is going to be our 3D wall slash floor. We're going to go on and just keep it as is. It don't matter where it is. And now what we're going to do is we want to come to our 3D wall. And now we want to set the position of, of that wall to that block that it was created. So for instance, the floor slash wall, our 2D version, creates the 3D wall. And as soon as it's created, we want the position to be the same for that one it just created. So let's go on and go on and set the position. So if we right click, we can see this is a little bit different, especially for normal 2D stuff. Like this is the um, this is our regular um, 2D stuff here. And if we go to 3D, the 3D object, you can see we have a bit more options. And normally you would go position and set it there, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna go to node properties. And right here, we're gonna be set in positions. So we wanna go to position and set X coordinate. And we wanna set the X coordinate to be the same as our wall slash floor. So we want to go to position and X coordinate. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing for the Y. So we want to right click, node properties, position, set Y, and we're going to set Y to our 2D version. There we go. So now, as soon as we start the frame, it's going to create for every block we have that creates the ground, it's going to create those 3D blocks. So that's really neat. Um, so in a way, I can go and show you. So let's go on and place. Let's go and place some objects here. Now I think it may the pos the position of the camera may have to be fixed before we can see it, but we can go and test it. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go on and run the application. Now the application may take a little bit longer to turn on because it's going to be, because it's generating, it's creating blocks before it starts up the frame. So it will take a little longer to boot up. Okay, so it seems like everything is dark right now and I know the reason why. Um, one, I think we're, the camera is just inside of it. so. What we need to do is back up the camera. So we want to go to our layer. We want to go to our camera. We want to go on and uncheck the lock button because we don't because we want to access it now. We want to go and click on our camera. You can see we have it highlighted. Now we see all this stuff over here. Once again, we're going to ignore a lot of this. We just want we want to come down to our positions and we want to go to our position Y. No, sorry, position Z. We want to go to our position Z and set to negative 20. Let's just go on for now and set this to maybe like 100. I think that should be good. Now, what we're going to need to do is go on and turn on the application. And you can see we have some blocks here. But you can see, yeah, that's the same color, um, but there is an ambient light on, and because of that, it's creating that dark color. Um, either way, though, I mean, if I turned it off anyway, it's going to look the same, so I'm just going to keep it on for now. But I'll show you how to turn that off, because we won't be dealing with any kind of light sources um, in this video. Okay, so you can see it did create two blocks. It didn't. It's not showing us exactly all of them that we have created and this is because the camera is too high now before we mess with anything with the camera and all that stuff um, well, let's go on and start creating the player or go and get the player started so what we were wanting to do is we want to we want to have the player kind of like always set 
the X and Y position of the 3D player to the 2D player. So let's go on and go into uh, the event editor and let's create another group of events and we'll call this a movement. Okay, so we want to add a new condition. We want to do a always event. So we're going to go to here and hit always. And in always, we want to always set the 3D object, or the 3D player object, to the 2D one. So we want to go to our 3D player. We want to right click. Go to node properties, position, and x. And we want to set its x position to the same the same thing as the 2D player. And we want to do the same, the same thing for the y. Node properties, position, y. And we want to do our player. There we go. So now, the 3D player object will always be on the 2D player object. So as soon as we set, um, so as soon as we go to start our start a frame, which I'm going to go and do now, we're going to go on to start a frame, and we'll go to our platform movement object, and we want to go on and go to set object. Now this is like in like in another video we had where we showed off the platform movement object we're going to be when we set the object it's basically setting all those values to that so it's going to give um, the player all the physics that it needs and but instead of doing the 3d player we're going to do the 2d one because that's what we want so now before we can go and get started um, like actually running the application we're not going to see much of a difference and that's because the camera is not following the player so just for something simple for now we want we want to go to our, our camera and we want to come down here right click and go to no properties and we kind of do want to do something similar but we always want to set the X position and let's see, we want to always set the X position to the player. Oh, not the 2D player, the 3D player. So we're going to go to our 3D player, go to node properties, position, get X coordinate. There we go. So now we want to do the same thing. Node properties, position, set Y position. And now we want to go to our 3D player no properties, position, get Y position. There we go. So now the cam will always be following the player. Um, but we also want to do one extra step and we want the camera always to target the player. So what we want to do is we want to go to our camera and we want to right click and go to target down here. Now what we're going to do is just do this all in one take. Instead of going to set X, set Y, and set Z, we want to just do set target right here. And when we do this, it's going to just ask for all of them. So let's do our 3D player object. We want to go to node properties and put the X position there. So we got the X. Now it's going to ask for the Y. No properties. Position. Y. And now it's going to say for the Z. No properties. Position. Z. Okay. So now, if we run the application, the camera should be at the player object, or the 3D one and we're going to watch it fall. So let's go on and run it. So 
saying C, which I think, <laughs> let's play that again, it's pro probably hard to tell, we fail. Um, but what we need to do is, um, you can see what, I think what the player kind of, where it kind of stopped midair, uh, the reason for that happening, uh, why that happened, is because we need to go to our frame editor, and we may want to do one thing, um, this is optional, but I'm going to go and do it. We want to go to the properties tab to the player, and we want to do this for the wall as well. We want to go to runtime options, and we want to go to inactive if too far from the frame. We want to hit no, and we also destroy object if it's far from the frame. We want to basically uncheck that. And let's do the same thing for the wall. Okay. So now, let's cl close the application and rerun it. So now you can see we're not stopping. We just keep going. We keep following. And what we want to do is, is go on and um, put the player in the frame, like in the view. And let's go on and run the application again. Well, before we actually do that, let's go on and click on our camera again. Let's go to our settings. And in our settings, we want to move the camera back a little bit further. So I'm going to do like about 300. So I'm going to go down to position Z and set that to 300. And now let's go and run it. So you can see we're falling. But you notice something. We're falling and we, we fell through the ground. But that doesn't look right. We're going up. Like there's no gravity. So, or gravity's been reversed. Now to fix this, what we want to do is go to our camera. We want to go to our settings tab in the properties. And we want to come down here to under... Uh, target we want to come down to this one that I have highlighted up vector position Y um, what we want to do is we want to set this to negative 1 right now set 1 but we want to set it to negative 1 so all we have to do is just add that minus sign right there or subtraction sign and now let's go on and run it now See? Right back up. Now, what we need to do is go and add collision. So we're going to get the player to stop. So I'm sure we don't want to keep following infinitely. Let's go to the event editor. And in the event editor, we want to do... Now, this is this the stuff I'm going to be doing here will be pretty much like what I do... What I did in the part two of the platform movement object tutorials. So, if you have followed, if so, if you followed that, you'll know what I'm doing. If not, hey, what we're learning here. So let's go and add a new condition. And in this condition, we want to go on to our platform movement object. We want to collision test. Test for an obstacle overlap. Now. We'll insert another one. We'll insert an, a second condition in the same condition, and this one's going to be checking for an overlap. So if the player, our 2D one, overlaps our wall slash floor, our 2D version, we want to have the player to stop. So we want to go under our platform movement object, and we want to go to collisions. Object does overlap with an obstacle. Okay, so after that, if I run the application again, you can see it will stop. But you notice he's in the ground a bit. And there's a reason for this. It's because the 3D objects have... They're, they're, they're in the center. They're hot spots in the center. So since we have our 2D objects hot spot in the bottom of his foot, we do need to add negative 16 to it. 
So what I mean by that, we're going to go to our Always event right here. And we want to go to our 3D player. And you can see we have these little... Go to our check mark. And see where it says set X uh, coordinates and set Y coordinates. We want to right click that. And we come to edit. And we want to edit the Y position. So we're going to go and click that. And in this, we just want to simply put negative 16. This will raise the block up so it will be just right. So let's go and run it now. And there you go. We're standing upright. Okay, so now we want to move around because I'm sure we don't want to just sit there and be still the whole time. So let's go on and add some movement. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add another condition. And in this condition, we want to go to our mouse and keyboard. And we want to go to the keyboard. And repeat while key is pressed. And this one's going to be D. And now we're going to come down and edit this one. So we're going to drag it down to the next condition. And we're going to double click it and then hit A. There we go. So now we want to go on and move the player left and right. So we're going to go to our, our D key and we want to come to our platform movement object and we want to go to on user input and we want to go to user is holding the right input. And we want to do the same thing for our A. And we want to go to on user input left. Okay, so now we'll have movement. So let's go on and run the application. And now I'm going to hit right. And we can already see something's wrong here. I'm going to hit left and we're going right. And if I hit right, we're going left. And the reasons for this is because it's the way the camera is positioned. Now I had troubles on this a while back ago. So what we want to do is we want to go back to the frame editor. We want to go to our camera object and we want to come back down to position Z. Now what we want to do is we have it set at negative 300. Now we want to actually change this to regular 300. We want to change this to the positive number. So we want to go on and remove this sub subtraction sign. There we go. So now if we run the application you can see already there's a difference. I'm going to go and hit right, and we're moving right. I'm going to hit left, and we're moving left. But we still can't jump, so I'm sure we want to fix that too. Now, let's go on and go back to the event editor. Okay, I forgot one thing uh, before we get into the event editor. Um, we actually want to add a variable to our 2D player. So let's go to our player and let's go to the properties tab in AZ where it's values. Now we want to add an alterable value. And this one's going to be jumps. Okay. So let's keep that at zero because we don't need to set it. And now let's go back to the frame editor or the event editor and let's go in and add another condition. So what we want to do now is kind of check when the player moves down because if you've seen our last, or not the last tutorial, but the second part of the platform movement object, uh, we had it where if the player falls on the ground, it will refresh its variable. So we're going to kind of do that same process right here, but just in a different order than what I did on that video. So we're going to go on and start out by adding a new condition. We want to go to our platform movement object. And this time I want to go to object stats. And I want to go to object is standing on ground. Okay, um, now what we want to do is set the player value of jump. So we're going to go to alterable value set. We want to set it to 1. Okay. 
So now we want to add another condition, and this will be our jump. So we're going to go to the keyboard, and we would, upon pressing a key, which is spacebar, we also want to add another condition though. And in this condition, we want to check for if jump is greater than zero, because we don't want him to keep jumping in the air, so we gotta, we gotta go on and uh, check and make sure it's greater than zero. And now, what we want to do is, as soon as he hits the space bar, we want to subtract. So, alterable values, go to our player, alterable values, subtract, one from jump. And we also want to go on to our platform movement object. And in this same action, we want to go on, on user input, jump. Okay, so now let's go on and run the application. So now you can see, there I am, I'm that little, I'm the black dot there, black square, and I can move right and left. See, I'm moving right and left. I'm able to jump. I can't keep jumping. I can only jump when I land on the ground. And I'm collisioning with the ground. So there you have it. We have the platform movement object working with Firefly. And I was going to show how to do the... Uh, turning off ambient lights or ambient lighting but the way I see it we can see the player that cube right there is obviously the player and we're not gonna be doing any kind of texturing or material in this this video was pretty much main focus was getting the platform movement object working with Firefly or showing how it works in Firefly so if you found this video useful be sure to leave a like and if you need any help, be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you like our content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep notified. And we will see you later. Goodbye.